Okay, it's finally happened. The robot is in, Mark. Yeah, it took a little while, but it, uh, it was worth waiting. Yeah, yeah. It was, there were some delays, but we wanted it to be perfect, and it's here, and we actually got it in the room really easy. Yeah, it was a little tight fit. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room left, but no. we did make it in. If you see it on social media, you can see the robot getting delivered. <laughs> Um, this robot is ADC, right? And talk to us a little bit about how we got there. Yeah, well, we've uh, had uh, obviously you have a robot, and we've been using it for a couple of years. That's a, a golf laboratory robot, and we still have that, and we'll still use that for outdoor testing for balls and stuff. Um, you know, we're moving it around the face is not quite so critical, um, but you know, in order to do all the bulk testing we really needed to do and get really good data from it without having to, you know, spend hours and hours lining up balls and stuff, you know, this is fully automated. So we can do a lot more cool things with this thing. Yeah. This yeah. is literally the latest and greatest robot in the industry. Nobody really has Yeah, this is uh, the first one they've delivered of Series 4, I believe it is, yeah. uh, this robot. So they've changed it over the years, and this is the most recent one that just came out. Um, this is the only one of its kind so far. And it's pretty special because because of that, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But I just wanted to introduce you. Obviously, we got Mark here, so Mark kind of leads the, the the thought process behind the testing and how this gets into our software. And this robot is Cool Clubs robot. It's for worldwide golf. It's for Cool Clubs, and it's for you guys. So we want this to be really interactive. We want you to kind of tell us about the numbers that you want to see, and the data, the way that we show the data. You know, we can always get better at everything. So like, be interactive. Get in the comments. Tell us all about it. Mark can lean into a little bit about what's yeah. So going on. so basically, like drivers, we're just going to talk about drivers today because obviously there's lots of things, wedges and stuff get complicated. But uh, you know, in drivers, we actually test 14 points on the face. So we actually do you know dead center obviously and quarter inch round and toe and heel and high and low. Um, that's a lot of information. It takes a lot of time to do all that stuff. So that's one of the reasons an automated robot saves us so much time. Um, for the purposes of what we're going to show for you guys. Um, you know, we're actually going to show you hitting the robot. So we're actually going to show center shots and toe and heel. Heel, yep. And at multiple speeds, right? So we'll test uh, drivers at uh, 75, 95, and 115 miles an hour. Um, you know, obviously the tour type heads will probably lean more on the higher speed. And, but, you know, the 12 degree heads and stuff, you know, there are people swing 75 miles an hour. So uh, we hadn't done that sort of testing before, but there's a lot of people, and those people really need distance. So yep. it'll be interesting to see, you know, what we can get out of those kind of speeds. Yeah, the heavy load data, the stuff that takes Glenn, who is our lead engineer here, he does yep. all of the robot testing, he does all the shaft testing, he actually gets behind the camera a lot too, so this is a magic that he's not there right now, you're on a tripod. <laughs> um, so us three are gonna work on this together, but there's some heavy duty testing, the 14 point test. Right. We're trying to dumb it down a little bit in terms of like workload, so we're just going to those three locations with driver, similar with irons, a few different speeds, and we're trying to make it more relative to you, the golfer. So 12 degree players should generally be swinging slower speed to require 12 degrees. Right. You know, you can't put everything in a barrel, but that's close. Yep. 95 miles an hour, you're gonna be looking more like 10.5 degree drivers, different, you're not gonna be needing such low spin at that point. Right. And then we're gonna crank the speed up for the, the low spin drivers. So, uh, you know, these LSs, weights forward, and we're gonna use lower loft, 115. Right. So. We can always like shift the test as the year goes on, but to kick things off, that's a kind of where we're going to start. Right, and then you know we're open to you know we want to make this part of the audience get involved as well. So you know send us some ideas. Uh, you know if you want to see all the drivers at 100 miles an hour hitting up on it six degrees or something, or you know whatever it might be. You know we obviously can't do all the tests you guys request, but you know we'll look through a few of them and let's do some of the ones that. Uh, you know, our audience wants to see. Yeah. Well, we're going to get Glenn, Glenn back behind the camera. We're going to walk in here, show you the robot, two robots actually, in more detail, and then you can understand the capabilities of this robot, and that might help you give us the feedback to make it work better. Let's jump cool. in. Cool. All right. Let's show them. Okay, this is it. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Almost uh, it's uh, well, you've been more excited than anyone. This is, <laughs> That's true. I've been waiting a long time. For it's this. been hey. Mark's Christmas for the whole month, basically. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. That's it. Um, so this is the ADC robot. It's different to our other one. If you see our other videos, you probably see some images of it. But this is two robots, right? This is the ball loader. Yep. And that's simply all this does is basically picks the ball up and puts it on a tee for us. Yep. Um, but if you think about it, you know, it saves a lot of time. You know, each time you got to put it on, you got to line it up. Yep. Um, all that takes time. And, and you know, safety, right? And safety, too. Uh, this is pretty safe in here. We've got this whole thing enclosed with uh, 
glass doors all the way around, and that's actually made of polycarbonate, which is Lexon, which is the brand name for it, but it's basically bulletproof glass. Yep. Um, just in case anything breaks loose, especially when you go at high speeds, this thing will go up to, you know, 140 some odd miles an hour, so 200 miles an hour ball speed. So, yeah. you know, it gets a little dangerous at that speed. And we already so. snapped an iron shaft through, no more than hitting balls, nothing weird. It just yep. cracked up in the handle and like stuff happens. So yep. this is to protect everyone else. It might be hard to shoot the best camera shots, but we'd do our best with some GoPros and some after, you know, B-roll kind right. of stuff. We'll show you this in action because it's right. really, really cool. I think it is really cool. Like that more yeah, than it, it is actually one of the coolest things in here. It's not yep. as techy as some of the other stuff, but it's basically a commercial robot. Um, you'll see these in a lot of different applications. Um, so basically it's designed, I mean, that's probably almost an egg picker, right? So it, right. the suction cup picks the ball up, puts it on the tee for us. As the tee moves, it knows where the tee goes to, so it follows it around. Yeah. It's just pretty slick. It's pretty slick. Yep. Okay, next, Foresight. So we use Foresight, we use an indoor data, so camera technology is, yep. is pretty good for and us. We're probably going to use TrackerMan as well yep. uh, to get some other data as well. And even though we've got a relatively short distance here, if we use RTC balls, um, obviously, you know, you get quite a bit of information there as well. Yep. And, and, and the Foresight's fixed, which is great because, you know, if that tweaks a little bit, it messes right. up the data. Yeah. So it's locked in position. Now let's talk about this arm that comes out. This is the T. Yeah, this is the teeing section. So we're kind of going backwards from the ground up here. Um, what we did with our old uh, machine is we actually had it on a little milling table, right? And we would just turn the keys and move it around. Manually by hand. Manually by hand. Yeah. You gotta be really accurate, right? So when we talk about 14 point tests, I mean, you're talking about, you know, quarter inch here, quarter inch there. And a couple of millimeters off changes things. Yep. So it's really important to get it dead accurate. So Glenn and, can input this with, yeah. in literally to the millimeter perfect, <laughs> yeah. nudging the team. Once we get it set up, he can sit behind his window back there and run everything remotely. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, you can almost run it from your house. Yep. Um, okay, let's slide back up in, into the body here. Right. And, and we've got some pistons kind of up top here. Yeah, well, we'll touch on, the, on this thing first. So basically, well, this has two motors on it, right? So right. this slides back and forth to go forward in the stance and back in the stance. Um, it also goes out and in, so you can go to the toe and the heel. Now, you know, typically what we did before is we'd actually lower the T or raise the T. In this case, what we're actually doing, the whole robot's moving up and down. Yep. So as you come up from the T, you know, these kind of take care of your X and Y, and this motor's here actually raise the thing to Z, so you can hit higher on the face and lower on the face by moving that part of it. Okay. Hey, let's stay with the body, I guess, right. while we're at it. Big, big kind of cog here. Yeah, uh, I think this is the first one they're actually done with this, where this is actually now motorized. So this is basically your hips, right? So this is what turns this, this part. Yep. Um, you know, the other robot had the ability to do that. Obviously, it was manual. You had to unscrew it, turn it a little bit, and you could do that. This you can actually do during the swing. Yep. So if you really wanted to do an inside over-the-top swing where the rotation goes over and back down, we can do that, yep. um, which is something we couldn't do before. Okay. Uh, during the swing, you can actually move that. And then this is also on a giant angle yep. from here. So Another we can... thing with our other robot that was manually adjustable, we unclamped it, rotated it where we want, but this actually is all automated. So again, you, if you wanted to, I guess in theory, you can actually change that plane angle during your swing. Yeah, you could, true. Yeah. True. Um, and then we're shifting slowly, sliding back down. Yep, down here, this is the main motor. So this is the big motor on the top here that drives this arm. So think of your arms, this part. Yep. Right. And that's the only motor our other one had. Uh, it had an, uh, has a uh, geared wrist part, so it's just free flowing. Yep. Um, so basically, with the other robot, we had one motor that you know gave it power, and where we put the power and how depends on how fast it goes and how it late it releases. This one's all totally programmable, so a little bit different. The arm comes down; it has a motor. And then the wrist itself, so this action. This is going to literally hinge. This actually hinges this arm. way, and that's run through a pulley actually that runs for the second motor that's in the back. Yep. Uh, and that's what changes the wrist cock. So if you wanted to cock the wrist later or earlier, all hold that's them, doable. Hold them later, release them earlier. Yep. You can actually hold that angle and change those things. And then the huge one for us, I mean, for yeah, I think it is pretty it, big actually. Is the forearm? Yeah, the forearm. So uh, again, our old robot, you know, has geared systems and it rotates. It's pretty similar to a human person. Um, but as we know, and collecting data, and, and one of the things that you look at foresight data too is what they call closure rate. So how fast is that thing closing? Uh, and with this one, we can actually adjust it. Right. So there's a separate step of motor, a third motor in the arms, which is this motor here that does the closure rate. Yeah. So we can kind of fan it open and slam it shut or yep. keep it square and show the DJ kind of move at the top. And right. All that kind of stuff. Yep. We're going to keep it pretty standard for like our uh, data tests. But yes. if we get excited about it and we want to make it swing like someone, yep. that's a big factor. Well, you know, our partnership with Sportsbox, you know, this has come to my thought that, you know, longer term, the way this thing works, 
Um, we may be able to actually film someone swing and duplicate that on a robot. Yeah. Let's also touch on timing, right? Well, you talked about all these different motors. Right. Well, they're like all independent, and Glenn has the ability to control and set them in motion at different times. Yeah. So essentially, what happens is if there's, a, I think it's 800. Glenn, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but approximately 800 different spots during the swing you can adjust. And the way this works is a bit like a Pixar movie is the way Tom explained it. And Tom's the guy that designed the uh, software for this part. Um, not a Tom Mace, but uh, Tom from uh, ADC. And so basically we have these 800 spots and where each position is, uh, we can put in those spots. And you don't put 800 in, uh, no longer do you make a cartoon film with 800 pieces of paper for one second, right? Where you flip through every single page. What they do in Pixar movies and stuff is I'll put this spot, this spot, and this spot, and the computer fills in the rest. Yep. So we do have control over all those ones. We could get detailed enough to look at each single spot. But in general, we just, you know, where we want it here, 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 and here, and then you can just duplicate that. Right. So, I mean, it gives us complete control of when and where the club is moving through the swing. We use the quad, at least in this sense, as our feedback, as like, right. where did we strike it on the face? Um, so our dots are important. Uh, wh where was our path? And then we can save these characteristics. So right. it's easy for us to lock in a test and just say, right, go to the 95 mile an hour, zero, zero, zero test, hit a couple of shots to verify and away we go. Yeah, I'm going to stick my swing on here pretty soon. Yeah. Once we get caught up a bit. And Glenn, <laughs> Glenn, if you can jump in here, you'll also see something else going on in here. Yes, we're doing a little bit of a different test right now. But this driver looks like it's high and to the right of this T. Yep. But there's a reason behind that. Yeah, well, centrifugal force pulls this thing, right? So the CG in the club is somewhere in here. And as it pulls straight down, it pulls it down. Yep. So we have to start it high, especially with more speed, right? If you're swinging at 50 miles an hour, you're probably only going to come down this much. But when you get to speed, eventually, this thing, this, uh, this center of gravity lines up with the grip. Yep. At that point, it doesn't matter how fast you swing. It's not going to bend any more than that. Okay. But that happens with the golf swing. So we start hitting the center of the golf club from right. a different position. And then we also noticed in some preliminary testing that we, you know, just talking about drivers here, this is the shaft that we always use, the blue. Yep. But now we've cranked it up to this 115 mile an hour test to show some people what that might do. We're actually going to change that parameter. Right. So we're going to have this test is our 95 miles an hour is the blue. It's a mid profile, it's a stiff flex. Yep. Then we've got the black profile, which you designed with Mitsubishi. Right. 70 grams X flex, so that's, that can handle that speed a bit better without deflecting too much, adding right. too much loft, drooping too much. Yep. And then down at that 75 miles an hour speed, we're going to go into a, it's about a 50 gram shaft. It's called a 40, but it's near a 50. And it's a softer tip section, yep. and it's going to bend appropriate to that speed. Yeah, and we're using our, our shafts, the, the, the Cool Club shafts, because A, they're super consistent. Mitsubishi makes them, and they do a great job, obviously. They make their own materials. Um, but we run these through tests and stuff and make sure they're exactly into spec. Uh, and they're very consistent, and like I said, that makes sense. So we do is a 50 gram in the in the 75, the 60 gram in the in the 95, and then the 70 gram in the uh, 115. 115, which is similar to what people play, right? Exactly, yeah. and we're just trying to keep it consistent is, yeah. the, is the key. Um, the other thing, just to note in here, like I said, it's going to be a little harder to shoot exactly the way we want, maybe GoPros, and we're going to figure it out, and you're going to help us. Yep. Uh, we've got the net here, and people are like, oh, you've got this cool setup, and then we've got a little net on the screen. But yeah, this is basically to protect our screen, right? So we want to be able to come up here, and we can slide the arm back and still hit balls and, and play games that we want and try some clubs out in here, or you know, we can go outside, obviously, as well. Uh, but we put this net here just to run in front, um, just so we don't beat one hole right in the center of the screen, right? Yep. So if you're hitting the same shot every time with a robot, it's going to hit the same spot every time, and you'll eventually put a hole in the thing. Yeah, so we'll be able to tuck that away, and any time we do screen records, we'll, we'll show you the, the, uh, the foresight range or whatever it might be. Um, again, these egg trays specifically designed for our RCT, Titleist Pro V1s. That's a consistent measure in our, in our test that we're always going to use that same ball. And I guess, I don't know when this video is going to go out, but I think hopefully we're going to have this released before the first product of 2025. And I can't tell you exactly what that product is, but it's going to be Callaway who go first. So, so yep, it's coming up soon. Yep. We just started doing the testing and stuff, so we're putting that together. Um, but basically what happens is we hit the ball into the screen, it drops down. This whole thing is designed for this robot, by the way. That's why it barely fit through the door. And then the balls actually collect down here, they roll underneath, and they roll into these trays. So. Basically, Glenn, every hour or so, is going to have to pick up two trays and reload it. And that's about it. Yeah. That part's not automated yet. But. So we love Glenn. Glenn's the best. <laughs> yeah. um, OK, so this is your chance. Get in those comments. Tell us what you think. Get excited with us. Uh, we're here to give you the best data 
the best robot data you've ever seen, unbiased reviews on golf clubs, our feedback, your feedback together. We're going to change the golf industry forever. Yeah, we're excited about this. We've been talking about trying to how, how we do these podcasts correctly and have all the information we need. We've got some other cool things we're looking at too, some scanners for measuring stuff. And we want to give you all the information you can get, right? Um, so, you know, by measuring at different speeds, 75, 95, and 115, um, you know, you guys tell us, what do you want to see? Um, you know, once we get past the testing we need for our software, which is what information we give our fitters, basically, so they know all the different heads and what they do, um, then we're kind of open, you know, and this summer, let's, let's play around with some stuff. Yeah. Well, stick with us. Enjoy the content. Like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.